Hey guys, it's going to again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you for joining the channel and today we're going to be looking at C Sharp Fundamentals. I'm going to be walking you through how to access few methods through a game object class. These methods are all static and they're going to allow us to interact with the game object. So let's work in Unity and start looking at it. All right, guys, let's start by disabling video 13. I'm going to right click on the hierarchy, create empty and we're going to do video 14. Let's go ahead and click on right click on the project area create c sharp this one is going to be video 14 and now let's go ahead and associate video 14 script with this game object so i'm going to go ahead and click it and then go to i component excellent so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to open the c sharp project and i'm, I'm using vs code so you can use your preferred ide and like I said in the introduction, we're going to be looking at the static methods that are available in, in the game object class. So I'm going to go ahead and open the C Sharp class for video 14 and remove the update method. Excellent. And let's just remove this comment as well. All right. So there's a lot of things that are available in the game object class. The first one that we're going to be looking into is the find method. So I'm just going to say game object find. And this one is going to be for searching for game objects in our scene. So this is the first example. So right now, if I go back into Unity, the only one that is enabled is video 14, which happens to be the one that we are on. So what I'm going to do is let's actually create a, another child game object. This one is going to be, we can just say item one can also add item 2 so I'm duplicating that and let's add another one item 3 excellent so now what I'm gonna do here is let's say that you wanted to find for instance an enemy that was in your in your game object so you could say something like game object that find and then the name of the enemy in my case it's gonna be item 1 and if I wanted to if I wanted to get a reference to that game object I can say game object and then basically item 1 game object so this is going to be my variable name so now what i can do is i can i can see the contents of that so if i was able to find the game object it's going to store that game object into this variable so to show you what is a storing i'm going to put a breakpoint here we're going to go into our debugger hit play and let's go back into unity and i'm just going to play the game and we can see that we're basically stepping through the code and I want to show you that I was able to find item 1 and you can see that I found it because this object is not null, otherwise we would see a null here. So I'm able to see the name of the game object, I'm able to see the transform, and within the transform you have a lot of different methods that are available and properties. So this means that I was able to find the game object and everything worked just fine. So let's do something different. So this is basically how you can find a game object in the scene. So but what if you wanted to find multiple objects? in the scene that had a specific tag. So that's gonna be example two. Let's go ahead and duplicate the, the comments. So I'm just gonna duplicate those comments. And in sample two, we're gonna be fi doing find objects. Let's see what it's called. It's game object, that find game object with tag. So this one is gonna be for a single one. So we could do the same thing that we did here, except that if we knew that one object had one tag, I could find, I could find just that specific one. But if I wanted to get multiple, I could use this other one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, get my object. And then instead of saying item one, I'm just going to say items. And in the tag, what I'm going to do is I right now I don't have a tag created. We have a default tag, which is called on tag. And that's the one that I'm basically going to search for right now. So let's say that we wanted to find everything that had that tag. So if you notice, I have a red line and that means that I have an error and that means that this is returning an array because we're trying to find multiple game objects that have that tag. So this one is going to be called game object that find, find game objects with tag. And then we're basically searching, searching objects with a specific tags tag. So if I put a breakpoint in here now, and we go ahead and attach the debugger. We go back into Unity. I'm gonna go ahead and hit play to stop the game from playing and hit play again. Excellent, so now if we hover over items, right now I don't have any, looks like I didn't get anything back. 
and let me see why that is because it has it's saying search for anything that is called on tag so I'm gonna stop this and let's go ahead and go back and let's go ahead and click on add tag and looks like you can it didn't work with the default tag so I'm just gonna add a new tag let's go ahead and call add a tag called item and what I'm gonna and you can see that that is tag zero so now what I can do is I can say okay all these item game objects are gonna have the item tag okay now what we can do we can go back into C sharp and we can say that this is basically item and make sure that this is the case is correct so I have capital I so make sure that you're searching for capital I all right so now what I'm gonna do let's go back into my editor and hit play and I'm gonna attach the debugger let's go back into unity he play to debug it and let's see what happens so i'm going to step over and let's make sure that i did get three game objects so you can see that i got an array and i can also look at my variables here and i have item one with the game object item one he has the name item one also the the next item in the array which is this is an array so it's zero index so you're seeing it at index one so this method works just fine so everything is working great the other thing that i could do here and i can also do a for each if i wanted to and i could say okay for each game object item in my collection let's say that i wanted to search for i wanted to loop through each one of those items then i can say debug.log item.name and we can go back into unity let's click on play to pause the game to stop the game and then he played to replay the game so we should see in the console item one two and three so that it's all working just fine so let's go back into into our editor and let's see what other things we have available so if we do game object so the other thing that we could do is we could find items with a specific component so if i do for instance i wanted to find items that had a specific component on them so right now I have if I go to video 14 this is the one that we're using so let's pick let's say that we wanted to do video 1 and video 1 has a component of type video 1 so if I happen to add let's say that I happen to add and enable that game object and what I can do here let's go ahead and copy and paste this command and this one is gonna be fine let's go ahead and go game object that fine objects of type I'll just do the one that returns a single item so search searching objects of type and what I can do in here is I can type in so if you notice if I if I do a parenthesis it's basically taking a generic so the generic it's gonna be the type that is associated with the game object in this case it's gonna be video one and we're gonna do let's try that and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say okay game object and this is returning so this is actually returning the script itself it's not returning a game object so I would need to do video one and then a space video one and what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add a breakpoint right here and let's go ahead and hit play let's go back into unity hit play and let's see what happens all right so now what i what i'm gonna do is step over one more time and we can see that we did get a video one and in this case we're getting the c sharp object the actual class but you can also you, you can also get the game object you can see that the script itself has a game object associated with it which is actually video one so what i could do is i can also do game object and then i can say video one game object if i wanted to store that into a variable and I can say video one that game object. And what I can do, I can I can say debug.log video one game object, and I could basically just show the name. So let's go ahead and attach a debugger and let's go back into Unity. He play to stop the game. He play one more time to debug it. And I'm gonna step over. And you can see that I still get my script, which is my video one. I can step over now this is actually my game object it's not the script itself so it's the game object and now i should be able to just hit play to keep playing and i can see that at the very end i should be able to see yeah video one right here 
Excellent, so all of that is working. Let's go ahead and move, keep moving forward. And now I have three different examples. Let's see what else we have available here. So the other thing that I wanna show you in this, in this video is one that I, I recently started using and that is the create primitive. And this one is really, really cool. So let me create a, add a new comment. This one's gonna be four, get mob jet, and then basically we're creating primitives. Creating primitives. This one is really helpful, specifically for people that want to create, you know, quick shapes that are primitive shapes. So if I do create primitive and I put a parenthesis, it's gonna tell you that you need to pass in an argument, which is gonna be an enum, and that enum is gonna be a primitive type. And you can tell the system, okay, I want to create a cube, I want to create a cylinder. Let's say that we wanted to create a cube. And if you notice, this is returning a game object. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, okay, game object, and I'm gonna say cube game object. And that's really all I'm gonna say right here. I'm gonna I'm not gonna be passing in any other parameters or or changing anything. So let's go back into Unity. Let's go ahead and hit play and see what happens. And it looks like we're still debugging. We don't need to debug, so I'm just gonna remove that breakpoint and hit play. And now we can see that in the scene we're actually getting a primitive, which is a cube. And I didn't need to specify any parameters. The reason why I didn't need to specify extra parameters is because it only it only asks for what primitive types you want to create, which in this case is gonna be a cube. It didn't ask for position because by default it's gonna put it as 0, 0, 0. Also the rotation is gonna be a 0, 0, 0, and the scale is gonna be 1, 1, 1. Excellent, so what if we wanted to do other different types? So this one is gonna be a cube. Let's say that we wanted to do sample five is going to be, you wanted to create maybe a capsule. So all we really need to do is just change the variable name, capsule game object, and change the primitive type enum to be a capsule. But this time, what if we do something cooler? We do, okay, we grab the capsule object, we grab the scale, so let's grab transform. And right now we have a local scale, so let's go ahead and grab the local scale and if you notice right now the local scale it's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically double it so I'm just gonna say vector 3 and then I'm just gonna say 2 2 2 and let's go ahead and go back into unity and we're gonna have two different game objects so what I'm gonna do is for this one I'm gonna offset it a little bit so let's change the position so we can say local position Let's go ahead and offset it at 2, 2, 2 as well. Let's see if that is enough. So let's go ahead and do, I think we want to do something higher than that. Let's do 10, 10, and 10 and see what we get. Let's go ahead and go back into Unity, hit play. Excellent, so that works fine. So now we can see that we have, we have a cube that is created at the center, and we also have a capsule that is basically a position 10, 10, 10, and I scale it twice as big. So let me go go back and change this to be something like two, two, two on the position so they're not too far apart. And let's go ahead and hit play. And now we can see that they're closer together. This one is twice as big, which is what I intended to do. So let's go ahead and look at what else we have available. So like I said, you have multiple ways, multiple primitive types that you can create. So, but what if you what if you wanted to create a prefab? Let's say that you had already an object. It might be a character that you had, and you wanted to instantiate it yourself. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new private variable right here, and this one's going to be private, and it's going to be a game object, and this is going to be game object prefab, and I'm going to basically serialize it. Excellent. And what I'm going to do here is this is going to be example number six and example number six we're going to be using the instantiate method instantiate method to clone to create a 3d model based on a prefab excellent so let's go ahead and do that before we write the code so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a prefab so i'm going to create a new game object it's gonna be a 3D, let's just go ahead and do a cube. 
and let's go ahead and do a double cube so we do something like this and maybe like something bigger like like that there we go something like that okay let me just rename let me just do some renaming here and this is going to be very very basic so i'll just create a a new empty this one is going to be the root and we can we can probably just say enemy let's say this was an enemy and then what i'll do is i'll move all those three cubes to be inside and i'm also going to move it to video 14 just so that you know that this belongs to video 14. so the other thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to create a new folder and this one is going to be called prefabs let's go ahead and drag and drop that into prefabs which is going to create a prefab and that is our enemy prefab and then we can just delete it from here so on video 14 what i'm going to do is i'm going to associate that enemy prefab with a game object prefab and if you hit play you're not going to see it because we haven't actually created it just yet we just have a prefab and these are just the ones that we created by using the previous examples so what if you wanted to clone this game object free prefab so that's why we have this other method which is called instantiate and the instantiate is going to take an original method uh, an original prefab and in this case it's going to be our game object prefab and what I'm going to do with this one is I'm also going to create a I'm also going to create a variable this one is going to be your enemy prefab excellent and it also takes a position so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to offset it let's offset it by doing maybe putting this at 4 4 4 and it also takes if you wanted to change the rotation I'm not going to change the rotation I think I think that's fine let's see see what it's complaining about oh I think it's complaining about that it needs the rotation so we'll just do we'll just put a default rotation there oops make sure that I select it and I think we can do okay I think we can do quart quartanian the identity it's gonna be a default it's gonna be a zero excellent so now that we that we have those created let's go ahead and hit play and see what happens so now you notice that we have three different objects so we have the one that we're creating to you know a cube through a primitive call also the capsule and also our enemy so we can see that our enemy is right above it this one was created by instantiating a basically a clone of the prefab these two were created by using the create prim primitive call so that's what that does for you so if you want to call instantiate you also don't need to, to say game object this is just so that I show you that that's part of the game object you can just do this instantiate and that will work I believe you can do the same thing with the create primitive you can say create primitive and you could have done it that way too and that would have worked in fact if we do this one as create primitive well actually that is complaining so on create primitive you have to do that but on instantiate you can do you have the oh, and the reason for that is because instantiate is part of object and looks like create primitive is, is basically part of the game object so this one is one level above versus this one is part of the game object itself and if we go back into unity and hit play that should still work so if we hit let's go ahead and hit play and looks like that is working just fine okay perfect so that's example number six and let's see what else we have available before we wrap it up so i think that if we wanted to destroy so we could do that as well let's say that we wanted to destroy this game object after we created it so if i look at the destroy the destroy i believe is also part of the game object itself so yeah the object itself so we could do something like destroy after the fact and we can destroy our enemy so instead of creating instead of basically creating it and leaving it in there let's say that we wanted to keep you know keep the game performance and, or maybe we're killing this enemy we want to destroy it so we could do it by calling destroy so now what i can do i can go back into unity and we should only see two game objects in the scene because I'm destroying i'm destroying the other one right away and that's basically what happened so what we can do in here let's go ahead and add a new variable and this one is going to be bull destroy enemy on load we'll just set it to false and I'll, I'll make this one serializable because I want to be able to toggle that if you wanted to look at the example with the enemy 
then you can basically toggle this, leave it as default to false, otherwise set it to true. And then what I'll do here, I'll just say if it's strong enemy on load, then we'll just throw the game object, otherwise we won't. And let's go ahead and add a comment. So this is example five, seven, and this one is gonna be destroy, destroying a game object. And this is the method that you'll, you'll call. You also have an override. You can also destroy it after a certain amount of seconds if you wanted to specify that. Otherwise, you can destroy it right away. Okay, let's go ahead and go back into Unity. And look at video 14, game object. And you can see that if I wanted to destroy, I could enable it, otherwise I'll leave it as false. So if I hit play, you'll see the three game objects. If I basically set it to true, we should only see two. And looks at that works. So that's basically what I wanted to show you in this exercise. So I show you basically seven different methods that you can use. And there's a lot more in there that you can experiment with, but for the most part, these are the ones that I use a lot for the game from the game object static methods. So if you guys have any questions, let me know. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And make sure that you check out GameDev.net. They have amazing resources for all type of game developers, for beginner developers and advanced developers. Thank you very much, guys.